Hello everyone, and welcome back to Zoo Tycoon 2, here at Sun Mountain Savannah, where we are currently working on building up an absolutely awesome safari. Did you guys see that? These people are having the time of their life here on our wonderful safari. Oh, that makes me really happy, actually. Hey, you guys. Smile. Oh, that's so cool. That is so cool. Well, hello everyone! Yes, yes, and welcome back, and I have good news! For one thing, South Carmine Bee Eater 40 has just hatched, which is fantastic. We might have to think about sending some of those guys off for research in other facilities so that we can uh, make a little bit of extra cash if we need it. Uh, let's just say our finances are looking a little dire. But the situation is going to be looking up soon, because, my friends, one of the random events has happened! So, we are playing this as a wild landscape where random animals may actually wander in pretty often and every three episodes or so, or <clears throat> every three months I should say, we might have a migration of unexpected animals here into our savannah. And uh, we just had a little migration of unexpected animals. And I rolled the dice, I looked up my fancy list to see how rare the animal would be and how big it would be. And the answer, my friends, dun 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 dun, is that there's a new animal here in our wonderful, wonderful savannah. In fact, there's a whole herd of them. Let me see, oh, there they are. I can see them from here. Oh, look at this, guys. So right over here, may I introduce all of you to the glory of the Roan Antelope. Look at him. Oh my gosh, whoops, oops, oops. <laughs> Sorry about that, opening up my Zoopedia all of a sudden. But look at him, you guys. We have it, oh, look at her go. Oh, this is fantastic, look at how beautiful. Oh my gosh, I had no idea that they just like hop along like that. Come back here, I need to give you a GPS tag. <laughs> But we have antelope and they are already back over here, uh, apparently leaving plenty of poop to scoop, checking out the water that is under this little tree. But this is really nifty because every three months when we have these wild migrations come through and technically the uh, aardwolves were supposed to be our first wild migration, but they did end up costing us a little bit and getting the grants to keep them in our territory. These guys are a wild migration, so they didn't cost us anything. Dun dun dun. So that's really useful, but we never know if it's going to be a good event or a bad event when we have a wild migration. We never know if it's going to be a really random event, like an animal that should not be in this section of our African savanna actually shows up. And uh, we, we never know if it's going to be a new predator or a prey item either. And the only thing that these guys here happen to prey on is grass. So the antelope, seeing them come in is wonderful because they clearly are here for the beautiful open grasslands that we have provided them. Not a ski resort, open grasslands. I'm very proud of the work we've done here. But it's really exciting because where these guys come, the potential for predators to follow is right behind them. And I would even think about, uh, I want to wait until we can really see if these guys will produce quickly enough or if we might want to encourage some genetic diversity. Look at them jump! <gasps> are the males going to fight? Oh my gosh, the males are fighting! The two males are fighting for dominance. Did you guys see that? That was so cool. That was so absolutely cool. I was actually gonna tell you guys, that's what the roan antelope do. They usually travel in these little groups of a male who will kind of rule over his little harem. And there's anywhere from five to 15 females who will join him. And I, I think that this guy might be the, like, the actual one in charge. Is that a male or is that a female? Let's go ahead and see. This is indeed a male. He's running from one of the females right now, but I think that this guy is actually like the lead antelope, lead roan antelope. We'll have to keep an eye on this. This is so exciting because we can start sit. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is awesome. We can actually get down here. Oh, wonderful. Oh, horse lover two is now pregnant. 
Congratulations, horse lover two. You're gonna have another baby uh, bee eater in just a second. I should have mentioned that, like, that's the name of, of horse lover two. Uh, let's see, bee eater. There we go. There. So I can just remember. Oh, and our hippos! How did I forget we have hippos right now? Somehow I forgot we have hippos. This is so absolutely exciting. But yes, so this is our first wild migration. Now, where on earth have they gone? And they're kind of back here right now, but if they need more food and water, they might migrate down towards where we have our safari. However, I don't want all of the animals to crowd in one spot. So we are going to treat this place like a living, vibrant ecosystem. And we're going to try to make it comfortable by planting certain plants that need to repopulate this, this wild uh, for the roan antelope to either stay up here if they want. Oh, <gasps> look at that! Oh my gosh, they did it again! That is so cool! That is so cool! Oh, there's so many of them! This is awesome! <laughs> this is so awesome! But I want them to be able to either stay back here to maybe spread around if they want to. I want to have lots of different food sources they can pick from so that we can really see where their territory is going to go. And it's going to be really interesting to see how quickly these antelope actually breed. Is this wild migration population going to be enough? that they can really start getting lots of babies going, we can start seeing a population boom to support, potentially, a future predator? Or is this population a little bit too small? Are we going to need to start bringing in some outside genetics and spending some of our hard-earned money uh, on actually introducing even more antelope from other areas? Also, it seems that we have a lot of issues going on here. Alright, this little baby bee-eater I think we're going to go ahead and adopt out. This one's doing fine, but the ones who aren't doing the best, I feel like might be good for uh, like a researcher somewhere to, to study. Ooh, here's another one who's not doing their best, I think. There's not enough water sources nearby. And actually that makes sense to go ahead and have them go to new areas because if there wasn't enough water sources for the baby to survive, it would not survive. Uh, and so it does kind of control where the bee eater populations spread, which is another interesting way to look at this whole place as kind of a living ecosystem. But speaking of living ecosystem, we do have living guests and they're kind of starving. Uh, I don't think we're providing enough food for everybody, so I think it's time to have a lovely restaurant. Uh, I think that all of you are going to enjoy that too. We've been working very hard in our beautiful savanna. You guys have been mostly snacking on the little snack shack over here. But now, instead of having to come down here for some of our like bakery snacks and our fresh fruit snacks and the salad bar, maybe it'd be nice to have like a proper sit down little restaurant. Uh, maybe run by one of you guys as the actual cook, which would be cool. Plus, the other reason we probably need to look into that is we're not really making any money. I mean, we are kind of making some money right now, but we're not really making the kind of money we probably need to make to keep this place going. So, yeah, probably a good idea to do a little of this, a little of that. Oh, but our antelope! Ah! Oh my gosh, and the aardwolves have already grown up. Are they going to start spreading out for their own territory? Are their mothers still, like, their mother and father still alive? I haven't even managed to give these guys names yet. <gasps> Look at the, oh, the baby aardwolf. Its parent actually regurgitated some food for it, which I don't know if that actually happens. But this is adorable, and now they're snuggling or nursing. This is fantastic. Janella is now pregnant. Congratulations, bee eater. We've got a lot of bee-eaters. How's this hippo? Trying really hard not to walk on the bee-eaters, I think. <gasps> oh my gosh. So it's getting out. It's slowly getting out of this little grass spot. That's so interesting. We have so much to do all of a sudden. I love these wild migrations. We have baby aardwolves I haven't even had a chance to really admire. We might have to see if we can encourage that population to spread by like adding more habitats back here. I want to see how far we can really get them going. Uh, where's our antelope? Oh, the antelope are really kind of like heading into the back corners in some ways. I wonder if that's going to sort of restrict their breeding. But let's see how we can help the antelope. So antelope first. I want to keep their population happy up and going. Uh, so what do they need? 
Salt licks. Okay. We'll put those kind of by the watering holes or like by the little riverbed that one day shall fill up with water once more. Uh, we'll put another one maybe over here because they would want to come down to the clay and the mud of the river banks in order to find enough food anyway. And then let's spread more of the hay. And I kind of feel like the food trough with the hay to sort of represent, we can actually hide it under like thicker parts, like the blackthorn bushes. I think this is really cool because it does kind of give you the illusion that the animals are eating from these natural areas. Also, I think we're really running into some issues with needing more naturalists. So expect more of our Patreon naturalists to be appearing soon too. And yes, I know the guests are starving. We'll work on that. <gasps> Which means I actually need suggestions for names that we could use for the different restaurants and kiosks, which would be really nice. Oh wait, are all those going to disappear as soon as I put this down? Because that would kind of suck. Is that, what, is that what's going to happen over here? Ah! Alright, we'll try this again. Oh, and Janella's now going to go lay her egg. Wonderful for her. Alright, so there's more food over there, but water is also very important. Um... And one of the ways I was thinking we could do water is like put the food trough down and then kind of cover it up with some of the plants that we put around the waterways, like so. Like maybe over by the waterways, you just have like a few spots where it's really muddy so the animals will go down there to get some water. So let's actually put a couple spots like that over here too. Oh, and the trees! Yeah, and we can also spread the trees around with little hidden water pockets as well. Because again, this makes it really cool to just keep it a little bit more naturalistic looking. African daisies up along the back there. And we are doing our best, after all, to try to help this area sort of uh, become repopulated after of plants and animals as well after it's gone through so many struggles of being bulldozed. All right, this is so cool. And the river normally links around here, but I'm not sure if it will do that now. Um, and then what else do the roan antelope really want? They really want grass, which is super easy. Like we can actually just sprinkle grass all over the place. Like, which we should, too. Eventually, one of our goals is to be able to make this place be a thriving, vibrant, living land. Which means we need a lot of money. Which means we're going to need to take care of those guests. Possibly become the world experts in bee-eater research. Perhaps every bee-eater that we research and have to adopt out could be considered, um... Like, we did a paper that got another grant or something. Yay! Janella laid her egg! But, oh, look at this. It's just so much fun to see how we're actually turning this place into a living... Oh, oh, one of our hippos is pregnant and I haven't even had time to name them yet. Holy canoodles. Oh, they are a canoodling. All right. Well, let's see. And then we want to have some grassy patches where the animals can kind of rest. Maybe sprinkled along. All over the place, basically. Because some of the animals will like to be up high and some of the animals are going to be more comfortable kind of semi out in the open. There we go. Oh, this is so fun. This is awesome. But again, we want to spread these kinds of like beds and we want to make the spots where the animals might roam all over the place so that they have the option of going where they would like to. And this place is really grassy right now. And this place actually might get lost, depending on how severe the, the rainy season will be. I'll probably use a random generator to decide like how severe the rainy season every 12 episodes or so is going to be, uh, and how much it dries up. And then we'll see the waterways kind of dry up or go away. And the ones that are hidden under trees, we might actually lose as well, depending on how severe the waterways are. So that would be kind of fun. Uh, yeah, they only want salt licks as their enrichment, and I think they should be good from there. Nice! So, alright guys! We've done it! I love this! Look at how much more alive it has become! 
every new animal and every challenge to help that animal. <gasps> the other hippo is pregnant. Holy cow. This is so cool. <laughs> but yeah, every every animal and every challenge to help that animal adds to this world in new ways as we try to kind of uh, step up. We try to step up and we try to do what we can to make this an even more living area for them. So this is awesome. We really should probably spread some of the insects out and about as well so that the uh, aardwolves can go where they might want to. I find it interesting how the hippos are kind of staying at the back. So we might see if we can spread some of the grass a little bit on this side, uh, but other than that, the guests are starving, and we do need to rely on the steady stream of education and income in order to continue to add more to this amazing world. So, thank you guys so much for joining me. If you could, do please leave a like to toss a donation in for our thriving Savannah. Uh, or, you know, you could help me scoop some of the poop. That would be gratefully appreciated, too. If you would like to join me on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, guys, stay curious. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.